Hello and welcome to the Mindful Men podcast, the show helping men to open up about manhood. My name is Simon Rennie and my aim is to get men talking. From mental health to fatherhood and everything in between, Mindful Men creates a safe space for conversation. Now, before we get into this episode, I want to say a huge thank you for joining me. It means a world for you to join me and talk about men's issues. And if you love what you hear, please subscribe and share the episode with your mates. You can also join the conversation on Instagram and YouTube, and I'd love to connect with you there. But for now, sit back, relax, and let's get mindful. G'day, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Mindful Men podcast. I'm your host, Simon Rennie, and today we're getting mindful about our financial well-being. From investing to what's going on in the economy and some simple tips that you can use to get your finances in order. Now, as we're talking about finances today, please note that this is not financial advice. I'm not a professional and I'm assuming you guys aren't licensed professionals on the other end. Oh, we are certainly not professionals. (laughs) (laughs) So if you need advice, you should consult a licensed professional. Now, I'm super pumped today. I've got two financial media juggernauts on the line. I've got Alec Renahan and Bryce Lesky from Equity Mates Media. How are you going, fellas? Very well, Simon. Good. Thanks for having us. I feel like you must have other people on the line with that uh, introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I've been following you guys for a very long time now. And, and in fact, the Equity Mates podcast was one of the first podcasts I ever tuned into. I was a bit interested in what was going on in the stock market, how I could maybe put my money to work and and you guys were one of the first ones to come along. So I've been wanting to have a conversation like this for a very long time. And I know, Bryce, we, we had a chat in the last summer series. Um, and I, I brought to, to light my f- massive self-managed super fund failure last Christmas or so. I'm not sure if you remember. You've probably done a lot more podcasts since then. So it's great to be able to meet via Zoom and, and have this chat today. No, I do remember. Uh, we do do a lot of content. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I can't even, that summer series feels like an eternity ago. But um, yeah, nonetheless, it was an enjoyable conversation. <laughs> yeah, it was an eternity ago because you guys have got so much going on. You know, I'm just going to reel off some of your shows or all of your shows. You've got the Equity Mates Investing Podcast. You're on Ausbiz as well. Um, we, we were on Ausbiz. We were on Ausbiz. Um, it was a great show. I loved it. I was, I was a regular regular on that one. Um, Get Starting Investing, which I love the, the whole concept around that. The Dive, Comedian versus Economist, which is the number one comedy show on, on all podcast platforms as well. <laughs> Absolutely Correct. amazing. Talk Money to Me, you're in good company and meet, pay, love. So there is a fair bit going on. Um, and you're also book authors as well with Get Starting Investing as well. So no wonder you're so busy. I'm, I'm surprised you're awake at four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> we, we, should be, we should be clear. We don't host all of those podcasts. <laughs> yeah. We have a great team of hosts that host most of those shows. So um, we're pretty lucky that we're, we're in this position. Um, but yeah, we're not, we're not out here hosting a podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I've sworn to Ren I'm not doing any more. Yeah, and I've got so many ideas for other shows. <laughs> I was speaking to a podcaster in Canada this morning and he does seven, so um, all by himself. So um, it leaves me for dead. I've only got the one, so and I struggle for the, through that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just, you're splintering your audience over seven. What? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he's, he's semi-retired, so he's got a fair bit of time on his hands um, and obviously a lot of content to get through, but... But let's get started. I'd like to hear a bit about yourself first. And for the, anyone who hasn't heard of you guys before, um, where have you been listening to podcasts? Because you're everywhere. But Ren, I'll start with you and tell us a little bit about you know, where you grew up, who's your favourite footy team, and if money wasn't an issue, where in the world would you travel and why? Oh, great, great question. So uh, I grew up in Sydney and um, then moved to Canberra for uni where I met Bryce, spent a few years in Melbourne after that. And then uh, long distance wasn't working for Bryce and I. So we had to go back to the same <laughs> city. So came back to Sydney. Uh, favorite footy team are the mighty Sydney Swans. And after last weekend, I do mean mighty. <laughs> not, <laughs> not sure when this will go out. Hopefully it's right after the grand final. and <laughs> We'll look truly mighty. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm riding on a bit of a high 
Um, and then third question was, if money wasn't an issue, what would I do? Where would I travel? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I, I don't think I'm the kind of guy that would like to sit on a beach and uh, do nothing with my time. I, I love learning and I love working and I love what we do here. So I would probably do something like this, maybe not in Sydney, maybe in, I don't know, Italy or Spain or something, <laughs> maybe New York uh, and maybe not eight podcasts. Maybe we'd do one a month. <laughs> Money wasn't an issue, but I, I think I'd be working in, in some way, shape or form, but probably somewhere a little bit warmer and a little bit less raining than uh, the winter we've just had in Sydney. Yeah. And as, has Buddy Franklin signed on again or what's the, what's the update there? Oh, well, when this is released, hopefully the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's all media. It'll, um, you know, we're in media. We get it. You got to, one way or another, you got to, you got to produce the story. And God, they, man, footy journalists manage to produce stories. So we'll wait and see. Well, my team's on the, almost near the bottom. I like the pros. And uh, if you're not playing finals this time of year, you're, you're talking about what's happening next year. So it's a very exciting time for, for those of us not in the finals. But, Bryce, I'll push it over to you and we'll get, we'll get to Essendon Football Club in a second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great time to chat about it. Yeah, he's been a wonderful coach. <laughs> um, but yeah, tell us a bit about where you grew up. Obviously, Essendon's your favourite footy team. Maybe why you follow Essendon would be a great, um, great to hear. And, and yeah, if money wasn't an issue, where would you go and what would you do? So spent most of my childhood, all of my schooling at least, in the country, greatest country town of Wagga Wagga. Um, did pr pr uh, high school there, um, left there and then went to uni uh, in Canberra, which was kind of like a, an upgrade from Wagga in terms of capital cities and then came to Sydney, which is even <laughs> bigger. So slowly made my way to the big smoke. But yeah, spent all my time in the country. Absolutely loved it. Um, would love to return at some point um, if all things go well with equity mates and we find find the opportunity to to work elsewhere i wouldn't mind returning to the country at some point but um so ren would go overseas and you'd do the podcast in the country no i don't think i'd do a podcast <laughs> in the country <laughs> i like the hustle and bustle of i think i'm at a good age to be in a city but um yeah anyway um if i had all the money in the world where would i go i, I wouldn't mind trying one of um Richard Branson's or but or um, Bezos's uh, trip to the outer atmosphere, yeah. experiencing what it's like to feel uh, no gravity and also see the world. What's the terminology there where uh, astronauts see the world and they have this like overwhelming sense of uh, space or something? Anyway, getting too <laughs> philosophical here, but that's what I'd want to do. I want to experience that at some point. Why I follow the bombers? Uh, it's just in it's just in the family blood. Dad's followed them for eternity. I'm going to follow them for eternity. You know how it is with footy. Yeah, it's very tough to break out of family lines. But and no, who, no who's regret. coaching next year? Do you know? Well, I've been calling for Clarko for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see him at the club. No offense to Rutten or anything, but um, I do think that. Uh, it would be a good move. I'd love to see it. And yeah. just to just to square the circle, it's called the overview effect. That's it. The overview yeah. effect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to experience that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Now, you guys are heavily involved in the financial media space. Um, what's Koshi like? <laughs> He's great. He's, good He's guy. great. We haven't been invited on Sunrise yet, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're holding out for it. No, Koshi's, Koshi's great. Um he works at Ausbiz and we um we did a show there and uh he wrote a nice blurb for our book. Uh yeah, so appreciate Koshi. We haven't been on Sunrise and we haven't got a box at the Adelaide Oval. So uh one day, one day. One yeah. day. Great, great supporter of the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'd I'd love to hear about how how um Equity Mates come about and um a bit about the journey from where it started. I know you guys, this hasn't always been your day jobs, but now it is and and so forth. So yeah, tell us a bit about the journey and how you turned this passion into a career. So um, Ren and I met at university and lived together for a while. And we both, uh, you know, had different interests, but uh, we, we sort of joined on, uh, on the share market at one point. I can't remember the defining moment, but I'd been investing in stocks for a while and, um, and Ren became pretty interested and, and we were playing the ASX stock market game. Um, and yeah, I think 
we started discussing and and sharing a, a bit of a, a passion together over that and realized that there weren't so many resources in Australia that spoke to beginner investors. Both of us were big podcast consumers at the time. Ren was a massive consumer of the AFR, uh, just a consumer of content in general, still is. This guy listens to so many podcasts, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, we really felt that the podcasts that we were listening to were um, aimed at a particular uh, type of investor with a p- specific sort of level of um, experience and we're American focused. So I guess we naively decided that uh, we would try and create Uh, some form of content. It was initially throwing around ideas of a blog. Uh, Then we landed on a podcast. Thankfully, we didn't land on that. (laughs) Thankfully, we didn't land on that. Uh, Landed on doing a podcast that really just tracked our own journey of investing with the hope that we would be able to look back and and, uh, understand how far we've come and use it as an excuse to go and speak to some of the best investors from around Australia and and become better investors ourselves. It was a bit of a selfish, selfish endeavor. Uh, no intentions to to do anything full time. I mean, business uh, podcasting wasn't even a business back nah. then. There were a few mattress ads, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we started, and um, we're fortunate enough to be uh, be at a time in podcasting where it was very new. So you didn't have to have uh, amazing audio quality. You didn't have to have huge production, and you didn't have to really cut through as much as you would would now. Um, And we're very fortunate. I think timing is everything. Well, timing means a lot in business, I think. Mm. Um, And we were very fortunate with that and managed to ride the coattails of a couple of big macro trends, which was the rise of the retail investor, the rise of podcasting, um, more money coming into podcasting. And then, of course, COVID hit and everyone thought they were great day traders. And that sort of (laughs) that kind of kicked everything off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My theory is still uh, there was no sports. And so everyone who was betting on sports suddenly had nothing to bet on. And so the stock market was the the only game in town. And um, it just, March 2020, just everything, like all of the brokers, uh, all of the finance podcasts, we all just saw a massive uptick in interest. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And did you guys study finance at uni? Or like what were you studying at uni? So I, I studied law and Asia Pacific security, a very uh, niche policy yeah. focused Canberra degree. Um, <laughs> you get a job at uh, ASIO, DFAT or the Department of Defense from that. So um, yeah, I, I studied that. Uh, Bryce uh, had a, a few degrees. Was, Half a music degree. Was going to be, uh, was going to be the next, uh, I can't think of a famous drummer, Chad Smith <laughs> Chad from Smith. the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, half a music degree and then went on to study business, but not sort of any applied finance or anything like that. But I think that's just the beauty of what we're doing, right? You can uh, show that you can understand and and uh, become an investor without having to study anything that really relates to it at all. So yeah, that's- and, and that's the kind of point of why I wanted you guys on the show so much. You know, you've got this hobby of, or interest in finance and, and shares and investing and Many, many guys, they, they lose track of their interests over time or, you know, particularly when you have kids. I've got two kids and basically my guitar sat there for about two years and hasn't done much aside from the kids plucking on it. But it looks good in the back of this Zoom shot. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a ke- there's a kettlebell there as well, which never gets used as well. So. <laughs> but it's about, yeah, finding those things that, that make you tick and get you interested and, and make your brain work as well and, and, and doing something with it, whether or not it's just doing it for personal gain or for... For a hobby or and then eventually changing careers as well um it's it's really interesting story and I, I love watching you guys grow as well um what's some of the things that you've learned along the way through the process of, of going from that hobby into the business side of, of the podcast I, I think we can probably break it up into two buckets i think uh there's a bunch of stuff we've learned about investing and money and personal finance and then a bunch of stuff around entrepreneurship and starting business and um I think for me, the biggest thing I've learned is just how important investing is and how few people understand it, even people that work in finance or finance adjacent industries. Like there there is such a need for more financial education and the benefits of understanding and finance and investing aren't just, don't just, like they can be generational. They they can... uh, and yet we don't learn it and we don't teach it. And 
then that from that the second thing is that it's actually not that hard to understand so one is it's so important and two is it's not that hard once you scratch the surface it's very daunting before you scratch the surface and putting those two things together it's it, once you understand it, it it is the most obvious thing that that you should be interested in it and you, and you should learn it and it's the the juice is worth the squeeze in terms of the time you put into learning it is worth it and it literally pays dividends um but but so many people don't and um you know i, I came from a family that didn't uh you saved up you got a house deposit you got a 30-year mortgage you paid that mortgage off that was wealth building in australia mm -hmm. and learning this whole other world and um that, that we just don't get taught about it, it's been so eye-opening for me just how important it is and how much of a shame it is that it's not taught more broadly so yeah. for me that's number one yeah what do you reckon bryce what's one of the major things that you've learned along the journey as well it's a there's so many things i mean I, i'll speak about it from a business point of view i guess because everything that ren just said obviously i agree with um <laughs> uh i think from a business point of view i think firstly consistency and um just uh, yeah that's it consistency is probably one of the the biggest things that we un unintentionally have benefited from ren and i spent four years uh doing this as a side hustle and because we were doing it purely out of the enjoyment of of what we were doing um and consistently showing up each week and um and just plugging away the the long-term compounding benefit of that very similar to investing over a number of years led to you know a exponential rise in audience that then led to us being able to take opportunities that we otherwise wouldn't have had but if we were to start out at the very first episode and say this is going to be a four-year endeavor where every week we need to show up i'm sure we would have looked at each other and said no way mm. no way and, and so and we would have we would have put success metrics on it for like year one or year two that there was no way we would have hit because no. year one and year two year two no one was listening no but we could do it literally on the side while we were working a full-time job so it didn't matter and, and that that's like a real privilege that a lot of us have these days that you don't have to quit your job on day one to start to start the startup you can start the startup while you're working in 95 mm. especially now that you can work from home mm. you can you can work two jobs and start the startup <laughs> and i guess what it demonstrated from a business point of view as well like we didn't set out to get that product market fit sort of we never sat down and said let's try a strategy yeah. and figure out if we've got product market fit but when we figured it out we just kind of went for it and here we are so i think if you do stumble upon a product market fit just go for it. We were speaking to Mark Boris the other day and he was, he's similar. You just, you, you gotta, you've gotta be confident in your ability to make mistakes and just keep going. And I think yeah. we're probably yeah. over, overly confident with that stuff. And yeah, yeah and yeah. you just, you, you like, you just go for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think it wasn't intentional at the time, but we definitely did ourselves a real service positioning ourselves as people that knew nothing. Mm. And if you think about most media most podcasters especially they really try and position themselves as experts and you don't give yourself a lot of wriggle room there because if you get shown that you don't know something or there are people that are smarter than you out there then um that's you know that's your reputation or your credibility gone but we started from a point of no reputation and no credibility and we knew nothing and we got so much wrong but it was just like you know we're learning and um it just gave us, you know, a lot of scope to actually just go and ask dumb questions and, and be the idiots that wanted to learn. And turns out that a lot of people were in a similar position to us and didn't know a lot and wanted to learn. Um, I think if we went back and tried to position ourselves as experts, we would have done it for like three months and then given it up. It's a great yeah. point because there's so many guys out there that want to do something extra, that side hustle or, or whatever, but they're they're stuck in the mud they don't want to try it because they're not the expert but as you said if you just give it a go and, and position yourself that way then you can have a lot of fun with it as well like you know podcasts open up the world to people conversations with people you've never even met or never will met and, you know we're, we're here today as an example of that you know i live in the sunny coast you guys live in sydney um yeah it would be rare that we would ever cross paths but um but it's you know this is the beauty about podcasts and and just giving things a go as well but but ren you mentioned as well that we don't teach about investing in schools. And I remember school, it was, well, I try to remember school, it's a long time ago now. 
Um, but yeah, we, it, it, we learn about how to measure stuff and, and using these scientific calculators, but we don't really learn how to balance a budget or how to pay a bill or anything like that. And that's what I love about particularly get started investing. It's really simple strategies and processes to, to get into the market. Um, so, so with that in mind, like what, what influenced you guys to, to start investing or have an interest in investing in the first place? Because it's not something that a lot of families really talk about or get involved in. Yeah, so just a, a quick tangent before we answer the question. Uh, I'm pretty, and Bryce, correct me if I'm wrong, because this is your story, but I'm pretty sure at uh, Bryce's school, he had a teacher that just ran a class, which was just how to make money. That was in high school. In, yeah, 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 it was epic. It was yeah. called um, it was a commerce class, but he literally just told us how to make money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't tell us how to, but just inspired us with stories of how it's possible to make money. Yeah, yeah. like different different ways. Property, to make- stocks. We played the game and the ASX share, ASX market, share game. market game, and he played videos that just kind of got you motivated motivated about thinking about money. Yeah. yeah. And like, even that, it sounds so simple, but it's leaps and bounds more than 99% of us got. So I don't know if you want to shout that teacher out, but full credit, it's the reason we're here today. (laughs) I remember his name. I I can't remember his name, but I tell you what, I knew that at the time he said he'd just bought this big block of land out in North Wagga and now it is fully developed. Oh, really? Hundreds of houses. Oh, so he, <laughs> he took some of the lessons from that class. Yeah, how to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so now I've completely forgotten the question that you asked. How do you start investing? How do we start investing? So um, I think I credit a lot of this to Bryce. Um, I never really knew about stocks. Uh, never really knew about investing. Had all of the preconceived notions that most of us have. That it's something for the privileged few and that you need a lot of money to get started and that it's too complicated and I didn't study it and I wasn't good at maths, all of that stuff, had all of those preconceived notions. Uh, Then was living with Bryce and he was the opposite. He learned about uh, investing when he was a young kid and his dad and his mom really helped him understand what the stock market was and uh, how simple it is to actually access it once you cut through all those preconceived notions and all that noise and I think just living with Bryce and talking to Bryce about it you you really started to open my eyes to what it was Um, and then I think for me I'm quite a lazy person and I, I think the idea of being able to put your money to work and then have other people do all the heavy lifting have some of the most brilliant people in Australia and around the world running or employed by companies and all of their incentive structures is to make you as the shareholder more money. Like that's a very attractive proposition. And that that's, that's a proposition me as someone who's quite lazy was going to take up any day of the week. I'm more than happy, happy for Elon Musk and Tim Cook to do the heavy lifting for my money. So once you start to understand what the share market is and how it's different Mm -hmm. to say buying a property or buying an asset uh, and, and, you know, hoping that it appreciates in value. Um, it was, I was sold. I was hooked. And now it's really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember your first, your first investment, Ren? Yes, I do. <laughs> we've, made, <laughs> we've made a lot of hay out of this uh, over the Equity Mates journey. Uh, Slater and Gordon, a law firm that still, still exists, but I don't think is listed anymore. Um, they were they were the hot stock in 2015 would it have been when we were living together yeah 2015, 2015. Yeah. yeah um the afr were writing about them it was all it was all good uh in the in the legal game and so i invested in them and then they announced that they were going to expand into the uk and they were going to buy a uk business and they were doing a capital raising to expand into the uk and I participated in that capital raising because I was like, oh, the AFR are writing about them. Everything <laughs> seems good here. Um, the sh- share price keeps going up. I'm so good at this. Uh, some accounting irregularities later, I lost so much money on that investment um, that I couldn't even sell it. I couldn't cover the brokerage to sell that stock. So uh, 99.99% down, call it. 
Um, so that was my first investment. That was how I got started. And the key takeaway there is however nervous you are about starting investing, you will not have a worse start than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and Bryce, what about your journey? I know you've been investing for a long time by the sound of it. Yeah, well, Ren kind of covered, covered it off there, but my parents encouraged me to to start uh, investing from a young age, but um, mainly by giving me, I think it was a dollar fifty a fortnight or something along those lines in in kindergarten, and I had to break that into three buckets, which is spending, cash saving, and then investing. And they were really, I think, trying to encourage the thought process around the difference between saving and investing. And we talk about on the show, you don't want to be putting stuff into the stock market that is for a holiday or anything like that. So they, they tried to instill that sort of thinking. And That's very barefoot investor. I think they, they were before the barefoot, actually. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, think, yeah. I think the barefoot <laughs> should credit credit them. But, nah, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, obviously, obviously 50 cents a fortnight takes a long time to save up, up a packet of 500 dollars which was the minimum um none of this online brokerage free all that sort of stuff that we are lucky to have at the moment but got the 500 when i think i was maybe year seven early year seven um maybe even year six and dad then invested on my behalf into a listed investment company that's still uh still available today brickworks bki and his his mindset was um or he was trying to encourage me to just put into diversified assets that's all you need to do. That's that's the trick. Well diversified, just consistently put things in and plug away. And um, obviously you get encouraged by seeing your stocks go up and you think that you're a great investor. And I then verged off that uh, advice and started buying individual stocks and have since realized that if I'd just listened to dad so long ago, I'd be doing all right. I am doing all right. But, uh, <laughs> He'd be stoked to hear He'd that. He'd be stoked. But yeah, that, that was my intro to markets. Do you remember the first investment that you did as an adult, like, and, and how it went? The first memorable one was Bellamy's. Um, and that was at the same, similar time that Ren was, uh, Ren and I were living together. And yeah, I got in, um, for those unaware, Bellamy's is the milk um, formula provider. I don't, I don't think they actually made it. I think they just labeled it. But anyway, uh, you know, going well in China and I got in at about five bucks and it just went nuts. I think it got up to about 15 bucks. And again, I'm sitting there next to Ren. We're both going, we're so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then anyway, big supply chain issues. It, um, it took a massive beating. I sold on the way down, lost money. And then it bounced like three days later back up to a very similar spot to where it was at its highs. And I learned a lesson from that. So um, yeah, it's a wild ride. Mm. Yeah. And like, why do you think, uh, Bryce, I'll, I'll keep it on you. Like, why do you think investing is so important? Well, many reasons. I think there's a financial reason. And that obviously is that you work so hard for your money, sitting it in the bank account, we know is just one of, one of the worst ways that you can start to generate wealth for yourself. Inflation, you're just going to lose your purchasing power over a long period of time. We know that the richest people in the world have all become so through equities, owning businesses. So if you want to set yourself up for life and, and put yourself in a position where you can create freedom and choice, whatever that means to you, investing is one way that you can really amplify that and have some opportunities to follow your passions and live how you want to later in life. So there's that financial reason. I think the, the other reason is that it, it opens your eyes to so many things in the world that you would otherwise not experience. And you're, you're naturally just going to become a better, uh, not a better person, but <laughs> <laughs> not a better person, but you're naturally just going to find out things and, and fill your, fill your brain with interesting stuff by just um, becoming uh, interested in investing. Now there are, there are ways that you can invest that you never do do that. You just passively invest in ETFs and, and that's fine. You're still going to get a great outcome at the end, but if you do sort of take a bit of time and want to try and pick individual stocks and stuff, you're, you're going to find, Personally, I find it just such an enjoyable experience just finding interesting stuff to invest in. Mm. Um, so, yeah, those are the two sort of key yeah. benefits. What about you, Ren? Uh, I mean, I think Bryce, Bryce covered it. I think um, we, we often have this idea that uh, investing is a financial pursuit. And it's all and it's all about the numbers and the charts and the data points and and don't get me wrong there is there is definitely a part of that but 
investing is about like you can invest in every industry and uh, all of these different emerging technologies and themes and across different countries uh, investing is as diverse as the world around us and whatever you're interested in no matter how niche your area of expertise or your area of interest there will be a way that you can invest with that knowledge and with that interest and that was such a big learning for me. And I know so I was at Coles, um, the supermarket chain before we quit to do this full time and just being interested in the stock market. I just, I just felt it over and over again. Like I had more knowledge about things that were going on and that, that helped me in my day job. And it was a pretty cool feeling. It was like this information's here, but not everyone's consuming it. And I felt like I had an advantage. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that, that informational thing is, 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 yeah, as Bryce said, 100%. But the reason we should all invest is because there's a real financial reason to. There's way too much financial stress. Like it's the number one cause of uh, like stress, full stop. And, you know, it's the number one reason that relationships break down. And it's just money is just this constant stressor throughout society. And there are steps we can all take to not completely alleviate that stress but start to ease it and start to give ourselves more choice and why wouldn't we do it yeah you've raised two great points one is that is the whole concept around this episode of being mindful about our finances to alleviate stress um to to get our you know money in order and invest where we can to try and make a a bit of a living for our families and and selves and so forth but also being inquisitive about the world and how the world works. So there's a bit of a mantra in the financial or investing world of investing in what you know, like Coca-Cola, you know, you see Coke on the side of a truck or whatever you see in Coles and, and so forth and become inquisitive about who's the companies behind the different products that we use. And, and, you know, I think in a socially conscious world where we're thinking about climate change and all those types of things, um, certainly investing in what we know can open the door into companies that we've, we've known but we don't really know if you know what i mean uh, would you say that there's a there's a benefit to that investing in what you know yeah i mean it, it's pretty difficult to get excited about something and and remain interested in in your investing in your portfolio if you're investing in things that you don't even understand you don't yeah. even know like it's it's one of those sort of basic 101 things and you hear everyone say it, but there's a reason everyone says it it's because it's true like if if i'm going to go out and start investing in biotech companies like I don't know that space and I'm probably going to lose a lot of money and not be interested in following up about it and researching companies and staying in tune with what's going on. So, um, and I think investing in what, you know, as you, as you kind of said, it, it opens opportunities. You, if you just keep your eyes open, you're, you're going to find ways to, to invest your money. Mm. Yeah. Now managing finances can be hard and confusing and, and scary. And, and as I mentioned before, I was, I was sharing my SMSF story on the summer series and, and that big failure that we went through and we lost a, a fair chunk of money out of that. Um, and Randy talked a bit about Slater and Gordon. Um, have you had a, another uh, investing failure that you, you care to share some light on or you, you want to stick with Slater and Gordon? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've certainly had investing failures. Um, we, I'm trying to think of, the the best example there's i'm sure there's been a few um i invested in the buy now pay later zip um mm -hmm. it, it had fallen a fair this is a recent one it had fallen a fair bit from its all-time highs and i sort of got in the mindset of oh, i can't fall much further than this <laughs> it turns out things can fall a lot further than um than you think they can so so that that's one that comes to mind We've spoken enough about my losses though, Bryce. What about you? <laughs> Similarly, I did lose out a bit on Zip. I think the, my biggest mistakes are often just um, just getting carried away with, with, with headlines and, and, and those sorts of things and buying a Zip or, or whatever where you haven't, I haven't probably done anywhere near as much due diligence. And, and you can feel it in your gut sometimes. You're just like, this is just a not a great thing to do but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think in hindsight though if i was to do everything again i would then i would definitely just start putting way more money into etfs way earlier and just by building a much so, much more solid foundation of diversified etfs and yeah. then picking stocks yeah and, and that's we did it the other way that's probably worth explaining what that is because i'm sure there are people listening who 
are thinking of investing as just picking individual stocks. But you don't have to. You can, in one transaction, you can have everything. You can. It's amazing. <laughs> Exchange traded funds, essentially, in a nutshell. Well, they are in a nutshell. They are. <laughs> <laughs> it's an investment where it think of wrapping. You've got the top two hundred companies here in Australia, the ASX two hundred, and in one investment, you can buy an ETF or an exchange traded fund that gives you exposure to all two hundred companies. And the advantage of that is that rather than me having to choose, well, do I want to invest in Commonwealth Bank or do I want to invest in BHP or do I want to invest in uh, Zip, which I don't think is in the two hundred anymore, but. Um, that decision is taken care of because I'll just invest in this exchange traded fund, which gives me exposure to all of the companies and, and doing so gives you diversity. It takes away the emotion of having to choose, takes away the time required to actually pick between stocks and think about valuation. And you're just going to get the, the market return. So I wish I'd done that earlier. Mm, mm. Yeah. This idea that investing is needs to be like, who you are, like I'm an investor and, mm. and like I need to spend all this time learning to invest and researching stocks. That that was a real preconceived notion that I had about investing in uh, ETFs. Have, they were a thing when we started. We just were too foolish. Value. To, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or <up there. laughs> um, but they're, they're massive now and, and there are people who invest literally, we well, can automate it now, but I was going to say literally a minute a month or a minute a fortnight whenever they get paid one click two clicks and that's their investing done and then they can go and live their lives so the idea of to invest you don't have to be an investor you know that doesn't have to become who you are yeah and when you guys were investing in these single stocks like slatter and golding zip and so forth and you lost the money or a little bit of the bit of the cash like how did it make you feel? Did you did that kind of stop you and go, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I've invested some of my money that I should have invested in an ETF or something else. And did it kind of make you hesitate to go again? There's nothing like the foolish naivety and overconfidence of a 20-year-old uni student. So <laughs> with no responsibilities, no cares in the world and very low cost of living. So uh, I think that, we lost money at the right time, I would say. If there's a time, if there's the right time to lose money, it's when you're young and mm -hmm. you can afford it. Um, but for me, even though I was losing money, I still like I was reading enough and learning enough to understand the opportunity was so big, um, and that if you look historically uh, in Australia and overseas, you know the stock market as a whole always recovers. Um, and then some and so even when I was losing money I think I understood that I just wasn't doing it right that the the opportunity was still there to be grabbed and I think that was sort of the main thing well I think what Rent's also missing is that um and and his story is a classic case is you don't have to get everything right like the the key thing to remember is that even the experts get only 30 percent of their stock picks right or thereabouts like the best investors out there aren't nailing every pick. And while Ren lost all of his money on the first trade, he subsequently made a couple of others that exponentially outweighed the loss. And yeah. all you need to do is find those 30% of stocks and investments that that outweigh everything that you've lost and you're obviously in the green. So mm. um, I think remembering that you don't have to get it right and that you're taking a risk with investing and that's why you shouldn't put it in if you're trying to buy a car or a holiday. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to talk about FOMO and the fear of missing out. Um, over the last few years, we've seen a few um, shares or you know, crypto as well. I'm interested in crypto pop into mainstream media. And we've got Game, Game Stop. I was going to say Game Shop. Game Stop comes to mind. Shiba Inu comes to mind in the, in the crypto space. <laughs> um and, and often you can, you can throw some money in there without really thinking about it. You're reading those headlines, as you said, Bryce. Have you ever got caught up in a FOMO moment and, and what happened and how did it make you feel? And then you, when you realize that, oh, I've done the wrong thing here? or I think we all have at some point in time. <laughs> I, got, I got caught up in uh, Shiba Inu. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I didn't have a lot of money in that. I got caught up in Bitcoin. I got caught up in um, just blindly taking stock picks, stock picks from my mates. Mm -hmm. got caught up in that um but i think my fear of missing out now has changed from fear of missing out on like the hottest 
thing because I, I've, I've seen how it can be burnt to not having enough cash on the side to take opportunities when they come like the market sort of correction we're seeing at the moment. My fear is that I'm missing that chance to get in. So it's a different sort of fear of missing out, if that makes sense. I'm, it's a more calculated one, I guess. But um, yeah, I've certainly been burnt by just blindly getting in on hype and headlines. Um, it's, it's part and parcel, I think, of becoming an investor and knowing how you control your emotions. Hmm. Yeah, I like how you said that, Bryce, because like as my investing journey goes on, and I'm still a, a, a novice at it, is I think Nick, you're talking about the, the correction at the moment and, and I'm the same. I'm like, where can I cash some cans in so I can get some extra cash and put it into my, um, my Comsec pocket or, or whatever or my SwiftX account and just and buy in on this dip? And I think that's a lot of people get scared about corrections as well. They get market corrections. They, they pull their money out. They think, oh, no, I'm losing money. But mm-hmm. other people think that it's a buying opportunity. Would you, ha- would you well, say well, the well, same? Or? Oh, absolutely. Ren sold his car to get in the market at Dead. this time. So <laughs> <laughs> he's squeezing everything in there. Keeps asking, for a, you can get it. keeps asking for a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that the point around people pulling out of the market is such an important one. And it's something that, we're doing our best across all of our podcasts and our social media to communicate, but, but it is hard because 2020 and 2021 were just great times for investors. So many new investors coming into the market and just everything was going up. Things that were real and then a whole bunch of stuff that turns out wasn't quite real. Um, but the, the lesson from history over and over again is that um, investors pull out at the the time when they should be getting in like the market bottoms and then they don't get back in until there's a bit of froth and a bit of bubble and the money is made in holding the money is made in um forgetting the stock market and just waiting and and letting things compound over time and my favorite story that i think really sums that up is uh lehman brothers collapsed on a monday in 2008 the big american investment bank um, if you had bought the, an ETF of the American stock market, the S&P 500, on the Friday before Lehman Brothers collapsed, in the next six months, you would have lost half your money, down 50%. You would have been hating it. Most people would have sold, packed up, gone home and said, investing isn't for me. Um, I'm just going to save my money in the bank. But if you had held on, uh, you, but 10 years later, you would have doubled your money. If you'd reinvested the dividends you'd be paid over that time, you would have tripled your money. So if you had invested at the very worst time, the day, uh, the the Friday before the Monday that Lehman Brothers collapsed, over the long term, the market would have recovered. And, and it recovered because companies keep innovating and coming up with new products and finding ways to grow and expand into new markets. New companies and new innovations and new technologies come into the world and get listed on the stock market. And the overall human population, the overall economy is just getting more productive all the time. And so that's what you're investing in when you, you just buy a bit of everything. And we, we understand that, but then when we lose money in the stock market, we get panic and pull out and at the worst possible time. And so I think 2022 has been tough. It's been a lot tougher than 2020 and 2021, but it's just really important to remember that the bad times don't last and historically the market has always recovered. Yeah. Getting into investing, it can be, it's really daunting and it can be hard for a lot of people, but it doesn't actually have to be. We've got a lot of micro investing platforms now. Um, I started off, I think with Acorns back in the day and rounding up my money um, to when I bought those cups of coffee to get my first $500 and, and, and buy my first parcel. But now you don't even need the $500 anymore. And I'll be throwing a link to get started investing in the show notes um, because I think it's a great podcast for people to learn about investing, particularly if they're new to it. Um, But from your experience, guys, and your journey, can you give us just a a brief touch on how hard investing actually is or how easy it is? Um, And, you know, some of the platforms out there that you you, you might be using or you can recommend that people check out. They they might not necessarily have to use them, but can check out if they're interested in, in getting started with their investing journey. So I think uh, the the question of how hard it is in terms of the actual um, doing it, like the the buying and selling, we did an experiment. uh, Well, experiment's probably a generous word. (laughs) We did a test and we asked uh, what is quicker, buying Amazon stock 
or buying Amazon socks, IA socks from Amazon. <laughs> um, and it was quicker to buy Amazon stock, like shares in the company Amazon, than it was to buy socks on the Amazon e-commerce platform. And and there's I think there's about 30 online brokers in Australia at the moment, and they all offer different features. So you can go to uh, you know, a finder or a, a, one of those websites, a comparison websites to find out their different features and their different costs and what works for you. But but they really function like a e-commerce website now. You add things to your cart, you check out, mm. you hit buy, um, similar functionality. So it, it is really easy. The, the challenge is then, well, what do I buy? Um, and we're not licensed, we're not professionals, so we're not the right people to ask. Um, but I, but I think the the big learning that I personally uh, took from my own experience and that I reflect on uh, about my personal journey is I thought I had to pick one company to begin with. And, you know, Bryce explained this concept of ETFs and index funds. And the, the great thing is these days you don't have to make a choice. You can just buy a little bit of everything. Um, and I would have lost a lot less money if I had done that back in 2015. So it, it has never been easier to get started. You can start, Bryce had to start with $500. Now you can start, I think there's one platform that lets you start with one cent. Cents, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Literally cents. Um, and yeah, it's never been easier. So it's a pretty good time to be an investor. Yeah. Great time to be an investor. And buy our book, Get Started Investing. <laughs> <laughs> we, talk, we, talk, we talk you through how to get started. Yeah, no, we don't. No stock picks. No, no sort of recommendations on what to buy. But guaranteed by the end of it, if you're not feeling inspired to invest, uh, you will be at the end of reading this book. That's for sure. Price will give you your money. Personal back. guarantee. <laughs> give you, yeah, I'll give you your money back. It's on sale at the moment. Amazon fourteen ninety nine or something. Amazing price, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's an investment. That's an investment. Yeah. Tax While stock. we're talking about the book, was it a hard, hard process to put together, or did you? What was the process like of writing a book? Um, well, I mean, we were fortunate that we had five years of content to to look back on, I guess, and. Um, and, and again, to Ren's point right at the start of the show, it wasn't a book where we were professing to be experts or trying to say anything that was really groundbreaking or new. It was just taking everything that we'd learned, everything that we'd um, discussed with experts and condensed it really into, into a book. So, I mean, we've, we've had people who have read it in sort of a day and a half. It's, it's incredibly accessible. It's cheap. There's, it's, there's pictures. <laughs> there's pictures. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we're all about making markets accessible and we didn't want a book that you pick up and flick in and see charts and tables and everything yeah. that finance tries to do, which is make things seem confusing. So um, I'd recommend checking it out. But it was good fun. Ren yeah. wants to do a second. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I do. I do. Watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> awesome. Well, well, guys, thanks so much for your time today. I'll, I'll leave you with one more question each. And it doesn't have to be anything finance related, but I love my guests to plug something that makes them feel good. Uh, it could be a book, an article, a TV show. They're watching some music. Just something that you're tuning into at the moment, making you feel good, and maybe can help some of our guests feel good as well. Good question. Okay. So for me, I... Um, you would probably expect that I give some sort of podcast or whatever, but I don't engage with a lot of podcasts outside of Equity Mates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's enough podcasting during the day, but I have found an artist on YouTube that um, I, I'm really enjoying at the moment. Judah Earl is the name of them. J-U-D-A-H-E-A-R-L. Cinematic type style music, cellos, uh, and yeah, great atmosphere. So um Sort of background, background music, not massive, but um, check it out. We'll be massive after this. We'll be massive after <laughs> to the moon. Girl. <laughs> so, uh, so for me, I do consume a lot of podcasts. I, I love it, and um, as we said at the start, I'm a big Swans fan, so I've been really getting into the footy podcasts recently. They don't talk about the Swans enough, I must say. <laughs> they just brush over them and talk about the Melbourne teams, but um. Right, got the footy show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So real footy and footy classified are two that I've been listening to. Um, but a uh, con piece of content that I want to shout out, which uh, Bryce actually put me on to, uh, also on YouTube, it's called Wilderness Cooking. 
And this this guy, he's in Azerbaijan. How did how do you pronounce that country, Bryce? Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he just cooks. That, so these videos are silent. Like he doesn't he doesn't say anything. And he just cooks. Noise. Yeah, just like birds chirping and a stream running, and he cooks stupid amounts of food in just this beautiful countryside, and it's just like it's so peaceful and so relaxing. So yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome, sounds great. Yeah, give it a give it a crack. Wilderness cooking, and I will say it doesn't translate to Instagram as well. I flicked over to his Instagram, and it's not quite the same. I didn't know that one. Yeah, so ju- jump on YouTube, and um, you'll 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 see. All right, gents. Well, thanks so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. At the end of the day, um, as I said before, a huge fan of your show and I look forward to seeing your growth and, and the next book coming out and um, we'll soon see you guys on the back of buses and, and planes and everything else. So, so well done on, on your journey so far. Thanks, Simon. Appreciate you having us on. Yeah, my, it was uh, a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode and I hope you got some value from it. If anything triggered your mental health today, please reach out to your support networks. Also, if you love what you heard, be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your mates. For more from Mindful Men, you can check us out on Instagram and YouTube and I'll throw the links to these pages in the show notes below. But until next time, stay mindful.